welcome to the first session on circles before moving on to the theorems as in the chapter given we'll be reviewing uh, reviewing the terms a uh, few of them which you might have um, learned previously and few might just be new to it what is a circle <coughs> circle in itself actually if you see the definition of it says it is um sorry let me just draw when i say this is a point it is a collection of all the points which is drawn at a given distance at a fixed distance from a given point so put this point which i mark as o and all the rest of the points which i have drawn this one they are all equidistant from that point o and if you join these points i'll try joining them in a free hand if you join them the formation you get becomes a circle though it might is not looking that good but now this is a circle and if i draw it properly would simply be like this and it will be all equidistant from the center all these points are equidistant i'll clear that part which i had drawn freehand so we now know what is a circle it's a locus of uh, points actually now we also know these points this distance from the center to the point on the circle that's o n o m o p they're all referred to as the radii of the circle okay then now we come across or move on to learn about the interior and the exterior of the circle that also i think you know still we quickly review them this is the interior the part inside the circle is interior the part ex um, outside the circle is the exterior of it so we write interior and exterior of the circle and then we move on to a chord i draw another circle to explain the chord this is a chord when you join a line segment which is joining any two points on the circle this is a chord anywhere you can draw actually anywhere of any length and even the one which i am drawing now which passes through the center that also is a chord and that is actually the longest chord so the longest chord is the diameter the line segment longest chord is the diameter of the circle now you know when the two points which a line segment which is joining two points on the circle what else yeah we take on was a minor sec sector uh, sorry minor arc and major arc minor and major arc it's a part of a circle any part of a circle is called an arc suppose i again draw a small circle here and this is a part of the circle this i name as ab this is and this as because this is the small part smaller part of the circle this is referred to as the minor arc and this rest of them which is referred to as major arc will be you know will be written like this and the minor will be written as such so it's minor and a major arc and then we have minor and major segment minor and major segment let's understand this i think is a new term to you when i draw a chord this portion which is formed including the chord and this small arc as because this area is this part is formed with the minor arc and the chord this is referred to as the minor segment and the rest of the part of the circle is remember uh, reg regarded as the sorry regarded as the major 
segment so segments are formed with chords and arc we also now move on to minor and major sector what is minor and major sector let's look at the figure understand it then i write it down there two red eye this is one red eye this is one this is the center this is a and b so two red eye with one arc that is a segment a sector now as because here again this is a minor arc this becomes the minor sector this pink one again and this yellow is the major sector so let me write down here this is minor sector and this will be major sector they are formed red eye with uh, sorry red eye with arc then comes what is a semi circular region when i draw a circle and the chord which divides the circle into two equal halves this both these parts are regarded as the semi circular region each of them this pink and the yellow part they both are a semi circular region what is the central angle what is a central angle obviously angle drawn at the center the angle whose vertex is o which is the center of the circle if i can use this figure here to show maybe this now this is the center of the circle there is an angle formed here which is re regarded as the center angle okay. now we move on to the first theorem under the circle i write down the theorem first equal chords of a circle of a circle subtend equal angles at the center what it means let's draw a figure first this is a circle we have to draw two equal chords it says equal chords i'm drawing two equal chords one here one maybe here they subtend angles at the center so we frame make angles at the center assuming this is the angle sorry that's the center i'll name them later on this is how the angle is subtended at the center by the chords which i now name as a b and c d which are the center of the circle marked as o so i just write it down it is given that <coughs> sorry this a b is equal to a c d what do we have to prove is angle at the center that is a o b is equal to angle c o d i don't think that will be much difficult for us to prove let's take up these two triangles try to prove the congruency of the, those two by c p c t we can prove the Uh, equality of those given uh, asked triangles so in triangle aob and the triangle cod what all do we find we find that oa is equal to oc they are the red eye of the circle sorry similarly 
OB will be equal to OD for the same reason they are also the radii. Now it also says AB is equal to CD. It was given to us. So by SSS congruency, these two triangles, triangle AOB will be equal to triangle COD. Not equal, sorry, congruent. So, once we prove the congruency, we can write by CPCT triangle angle AOB is equal to angle COD. So, that is proved. Now, let us take up the converse of this theorem. I write the converse theorem here and we will be discussing how that can be proved. If the angles subtended by the chords of a circle at the center are equal, then the chords are equal. We will be drawing a similar figure. drawing similar figure the only part different will be the given and to prove I name them similarly I also draw the angles at the center you can do this proof by yourself you also again have to prove the congruency as we did in the previous proof. Prove the congruency of these two triangles. By CPCT you can say AB is equal to CD. The only difference here, as, uh, here will be in the previous one we applied SSS congruency. In this second proof, the converse proof, it will be the application of SAS congruency. See, you can write OA equals to OC. You can also say OB equals OD as in the previous one. The only difference here is given this angle is equal to this angle. So, by SAS congruency, you can prove the con congruency of the triangle, triangles and thereby making uh, AB equals CD by CPCD. Thank you.